I've got a small scale here that I need to mark. It's just a 10 millimeter scale plus a couple extra millimeters. You can see these lines are about 9 millimeters long and the longer lines are 11 millimeters long. So we can do this in EasyCAD because there's a feature called Power Ruler. So let's take a look at that and see if it's easy to use or not. So we go up to the laser menu and we go to Power Ruler. And then what pops up is this little grid. It's essentially a small workspace for EasyCAD. So this workspace essentially has an object list on the left and it has an XY grid on the right. We have a couple buttons on the top to start a new file, to open something, and these will be a dot ruler file. So you can save whatever you do in this workspace. So you can click save if you make changes to a current file or you can save the file as a file and open it later. And you can also export whatever you're doing here into your workspace and get out of this little work environment here. So you can add different vectors or whatever you need. For example, for this thing, I'm gonna need to add a couple more graphics to it. There'll be a logo here and I'm gonna add one more graphic on it, but that's not gonna be the only thing that's marked on it. And I don't wanna mark these separately, so this is gonna to go to the workspace. But as you can see at the bottom of this little environment, you have the light, mark, parameter, and quit buttons, as well as a parts counter. So you could mark directly from here. I haven't had good experience marking from here so far, but I'm not you know, super well versed in this yet. So let's quickly look at how we can use this thing to mark a ruler or this little tiny scale. So I'm gonna do three things. I'm gonna make this scale and we'll mark it. And then we'll make a little bit more complicated ruler and we'll mark it. And then at the very end, we'll make a disc ruler and we'll mark that. That's essentially just a circle. So let's start by adding some dimensions. So I'm gonna keep this in view of the camera so we can keep in mind what we're going for. I'm gonna orient it exactly like this. So you can see when we click on the add button, we have a big screen here with a bunch of options. But mainly on the top, we have three boxes, one that says type. So this is the type of graphic you're going to add. Do you want, just want to add a line? Do you want to add a value to the line? That would be like a number, zero, whatever. Or do you want to add some text to the line? That would be something identifying, let's say, the, the scale. So if you were making a scale for millimeters, centimeters, maybe something else altogether, like bar, PSI, pounds, whatever, you can add that. And you can orient that and change the size of it and the font of it in this second box. And lastly, on this first box, you can add a vector file. So if you had a logo or something that you wanted to mark in addition that you wanted to be part of the ruler, you could add that. And then this last box here is our friendly hatch box that we're pretty familiar with. If you're not familiar with that, go check out my video on the beginner's guide to hatching and I go through that in detail. So this would just be hatching our letters or our lines as well. And we want to do that because we want them to show up. We don't want them to have zero thickness. So let's take a look at what options we have here. Let's say we're gonna add the lines, so that's gonna be all of these long lines. Now you're gonna to have to add them in the order that they show up. Not in the order they show up, but in, in, in some kind of order. So I've got short lines and I've got long lines, just two different types for this uh, little project. So I'm gonna start with the lines, I'm gonna start with the long lines. So to do that, we have three long lines. So for the pen number, now this is gonna be based on your pen on the main parameters over here on the right. So I'm just gonna use pen one or pen zero, that's fine. So for the graduation number, that's how many lines do you want? So I want a total of three long lines. Starting position, I want that at the zero position. Increment position, how often do you want these lines to show up? I want them to show up every five millimeters. Line width, now this is where you add a little bit of thickness to your line so you have something to hatch. So I'm gonna add almost nothing. So 0 0.05 millimeters is what I'm gonna add. And then this over here on the right where it says start point and end point, this is actually what you're going to do to make your line longer or shorter. So it has an X start point and a Y start point. Now if you wanted to make a diagonal line, you could use both of these values. I'm just gonna add a Y value, so we're adding length. So we're adding these lines vertically right on this axis and you'll see it show up as soon as we add this. So I'm gonna make these nine millimeters long and that's gonna go from Y zero up to Y nine. So our X is gonna be right on the zero zero point. And let's just take a look at these last few boxes, even though they're not available for the line. So we don't have a start value or an increment value, but for the dot bit count, this is just a bad translation. What this means is your decimal point. So do you have trailing zeros after your decimal point? Do you want to have five zeros showing up after your number? And this is just leading decimal, leading zeros. So do you want to have three zeros show up before your number? And if you do, you have to click this checkbox. And these last boxes down here are if you're choosing a vector file, you can check these two arrows and pull your vector file and you can scale it. So let's go back to our line. So we've got three of our big lines. Uh, let's see, 5.059. Oh, that's not nine, that's 11. 
but in this case, our top is going to be zero. So actually I did that wrong. So our Y start point is going to be negative two and our end point is going to be nine because we want this line to be longer than the others. Now you can do that backwards, but this is the way I'm going to do it. And we're definitely gonna enable our hatch. For now, I'm gonna choose this because I think it's gonna mark the fastest. I'm not gonna do all calc because I almost never do that. And the line distance, we're gonna make 0.01. If you made this too large, nothing would show up because these lines are very small. So let's say okay. So we've got three lines on here and let's zoom in a little bit. Notice that on the top of the screen, you have a little A to auto resize plus and minus to zoom in and out. So you can see we have a couple lines protruding past our zero point. That looks fine. Now let's add some more. So we need lines that are now nine millimeters long. And we have a couple different ways to do this, but I think I'm just going to add them manually. So what I'm gonna do is choose a line. We're gonna have, let's see, one, two, three of these lines. Our start point is going to be the one millimeter line. We're gonna increment by five millimeters. And we are going to choose the exact same line width of 0.05. We are going to choose an endpoint of nine. And let's see, we're gonna enable our hatch, get rid of all calc, choose the same pattern and change our distance to 0.01. So we'll say okay. And there's our first line. And we're gonna add another line and you can see this would be a lot faster if we were making, let's say, a yardstick or uh, you know a 300 millimeter or a one meter ruler. But we're making this small, so we have to, we're not going to get that much benefit from the way we're setting it up. But you could also set it up in little batches, so you can make um, these nine millimeter long lines starting at position one, and then you could say, I want it to show up for one millimeter for four instances. But in this case, we're going to skip past each one because this is how you would do it for a longer ruler. So this one's going to have also three instances. Our start point is going to be two millimeters. We're going to increment by five millimeters and our width will be exactly the same of 0.05 millimeters. Our end point is going to be nine millimeters. We'll enable the hatch, disable all calc and give it a line distance of 0.01 for the hatch. We'll say, okay, now we have three lines. So we need a couple more and we're going to go to a total of 13 millimeters. So this will be the last line that we're going to make three of. So we're going to have three. Our position is three millimeters. We're incrementing by five millimeters line width. And it'd be nice if they had like a duplicate function over here on the left, but I haven't seen one. So I don't think there is one. I think you have to make these time and time again. Line width is 0.05. Enable, disable 0.01. And let's use that pattern and change that to a length of nine millimeters. Say okay. Now we need one more line. So let's click add again. Now this is only gonna be two instances because we're only going to a total of 13 millimeters and we are going to start at position four and we want to increment by one. Line width is 0.05. No, that's not right. We wanna increment by five and our position is 0.05. This is still gonna be a nine millimeter line. We're gonna enable the hatch, 0.01, change the pattern. Did I skip anything? I think that's okay. Okay, we're missing a line there. No, we're not. Sometimes they just don't show up. The preview isn't necessarily that good. So you may have to zoom in and out to make sure your lines are there. Okay, so that's basically our setup. And now we wanna add some, some values to this so we can see what these lines actually represent. So to do that, we're just gonna click the add button again, except this time we're not gonna add a line, we're gonna add a value. So in this case, it's gonna choose a font. We can leave it on Arial. Now the text height is gonna be a bit of a guess. You can see that we've got two millimeters below this line. So you probably want this, and we do want it to be oriented sideways like this in this fashion. So I'm gonna change this to 90 degrees. And let's say we want our text height. Let's just see what 2.5 millimeters looks like. And we want it to kind of be centered. So we wanna change its position to a start point on the x-axis of let's say maybe two millimeters. Let's see what that looks like. And let's see what else. So we're gonna increment by five millimeters and we're going to start at zero and we're going to have a total of three numbers showing up here. So we're gonna have a zero, we're gonna have a five and we're gonna have a 10. 
I'm not going to do the 0.5 and 1. I'd rather it not show up in centimeters. And we will have our hatch. And we'll use the exact same values. Eh, maybe we'll use a little bit larger. And we can just use the bidirectional hatch. So have we skipped anything here? We've got our number of positions. We've got our starting position of 0. We're incrementing by 5. Value. Okay, let's see for a second here and take a look at this screen so uh, there's an increment value for the actual value and there's an increment value for the position so i had the position correct of five millimeters but i did not change the increment value so it's set to 10 millimeters so you're going to see 0 10 and 20 instead of what it should be 0 5 and i guess 10. so just pay attention to that that's there as well and i didn't notice it because i was paying more attention to the position of the number now that shows up all right so we're not in a good position here we needed our, our y value to go down by at least, I don't know, three millimeters. But you can see that's kind of how you, know, you have to click on the value every time you want to change it. So click edit, y of negative three, maybe something like that. And were we even close on the x? No, it looks like we were too far. Let's give it a x of one. So that looks a little bit better, but we need to even go further than that. So negative 3.5, let's do that. All right, that's close enough just for demonstration purposes. And that's essentially all I'm doing there. So what you want to do when you're happy with what shows up is click Save As so you don't have to make this again. And what's going to show up is the regular Save dialog. And you can see it's a dot ruler format. We'll click Save. I already did save it here. So what I'm going to do now is export it to the workspace. You don't have to do that. I think it's going to mark better if you do. But you can see you can light it and mark it from here. I haven't had good results with that so far. But we can light it just to see what it looks like. So that's what you get, a big grid. I don't like that. I'm not going to do it from here. Now, we'll come back to this parameter button in a minute to make our other types of marking. But for our purposes, we want to make sure this radio button on the parameter button says straight ruler. If you're marking anything else, the size isn't going to come out correct. So let's say OK. And then let's export it to the workspace. So there it is. Let's zoom to fit. And you can see our hatching here. And make sure pen number 0 looks OK. So I like these parameters. That looks fine. Let's select the whole thing. Let's light it. And I'm not going to put it on this. I'm going to get a scrap piece of aluminum. Let's put it on here. Let's light that. So there it is. And let's mark it. And that's what we have. And let's just put a ruler on it to see how close our dimensions are. pretty close to 13 for my eyes. Now, if that were off, I would check a couple things. One, make sure your focus is correct. Two, if you have not adjusted for distortion, you can watch my video on that. I believe it's actually called adjusting for distortion. Essentially, it means you're going to have to go into this menu and you'll essentially run through this scale. So if your Y is off, it's going to be Galvo 1. If your X is off, it's going to be Galvo 2. What you're going to do is mark a box and you're going to say, hey, what did it actually measure to? So if I draw a 50 millimeter box and it measures to 49.5, then it's going to scale that down to be appropriate to make an adjustment. Pretty easy. I go through it in that video, though. So if you uh, are having issues with that, check it out. Or one last thing, if you go to power ruler again, and like I said in the parameter menu, if you have disk ruler checked or anything else checked, your scale could be off. So just make sure you're on straight ruler when you're doing this. So that's a simple scale that shows you kind of a rundown of making a ruler. So let's go to laser again. Let's go to power ruler. And we will say new. And let's, let's go to the parameter button first. Now we'll click disk ruler. So we're going to say OK to that. And you can set the diameter right here. So let's make it 40 millimeters. Let's pretend we're doing a watch face, uh, maybe the bezel of a watch. So 40 millimeters, maybe that'll be a decent scale. And let's add some lines to it, just like we did. So for the lines, we don't need text right now. Let's say our start position is going to be uh, zero degrees, our increment position. So a watch face will have 360 degrees, and we're going to have a total of 60 hash marks. So 360 divided by 60 should be what, six? So we're going to have six degrees for every increment. Our line width, we're going to make that. Let's just make it the exact same thing. We can make it thicker or thinner, but I'm happy with 0.05 for now. We will hatch these, and I'm going to leave the pattern 
as that. That's fine. So you have to choose a length. Let's leave it at five. And oh, now this is kind of important. So if you for the uh, ring, you actually do want to pay attention to whether you're using a positive or a negative number here. Do you want it to extend inward toward the circle or outward from the circle? So in the case of a watch, since I said 40 millimeters, we probably want it to extend inward. So let's say negative two or let's say negative three millimeters. So then let's say OK to that. And we want a total of 60 marks. Did I hatch that? I did not. No, I did. Oh, the hatching is huge. 0.01. So there we go. There's 60 hash marks. And this total outside diameter should measure 40 millimeters. We can mark that real quick just to see what it looks like. Let's move the camera. I'm going to export that to the workspace. We'll have to save it as something, so we'll just say 60 marks. Let's zoom to fit. Let's light it up. Okay, we're not showing the hash marks, but there we are. And let's mark it. Pretty quick. Let's give it a quick measurement and see if our outside diameter is actually 40. Certainly looks close to me. Okay, so now let's take a slightly different approach. Go back to Power Ruler. And let's say we want a slightly longer hash mark at the, well, if we're going to have to call them 12 and 3 and 6 and 9 positions, we're going to have to play with the uh, values a little bit because they will orient. So this one's vertical, this one's going to be sideways, and you probably don't want that. Well, let's edit this. And instead of going all the way around, let's just go, um, let's see, we don't want the first mark and we don't want this 15th mark. So we're going to do the 14 marks in between the two of them. We're going to start at the 6 degree mark, as we said there were 6 degrees. We're going to increment by 6 degrees. We'll keep the line width the same. We'll keep that the same. And that's good. Let's go for it. Okay, so now we have 14 here. So let's add another, and let's do the exact same thing. So we're going to do another 14. We're going to start at, let's see, uh, I guess it would be 180, right? 180 degrees, 186 degrees actually. We're going to increment by 6 degrees. Our line width will still be 0 0.05. We'll still be hatching the line. We'll do it with the same pattern, 0 0.01. And we're going to make this the exact same length of 3. Let's say OK. And did we hatch our previous one? That's hatched. That's hatched. This needs to be negative 3. Okay. Let's add another. Okay, I guess I was off on my number, 180. So let's uh, go 96 this time. So 14. We're going to start at 96. We're going to increment by 6. Line width, 0 0.05. Negative 3. Enable the hatch. It's getting a little tedious at this point, but at least we'll have a full example. And you can see my mistakes as I go. Line distance 0.01. I think I picked up everything. Let's say OK. So we need one more. I'm going to hope that's 276. 14. Start position 276. Increment by 6. Line width of 0.05. Keep the length negative 3. Not negative 0.3. Negative 3. Enable 0.01. Okay, so we have a full circle here, but we're missing four hash marks. So let's add in those four hash marks. We just need four. We need to make them a little bit longer. So instead of negative three, we'll make them negative five. Let's enable the hatch and keep the same hatch line spacing. Keep the same line width. Maybe even make it a little bigger. So instead of 0.05, we'll make it 0.07. Increment by, now this one we're going to increment by 90 degrees. And we're going to start at zero. That should be good. So now we have our long lines at the uh, 12, 15, or 12, 3, 6, 9, whatever you want to call it, position. Maybe we want to add some values in there. Maybe we want them beyond it. Maybe we want them below it. But you can do that, and you may have to add these sort of individually. So what I'll do here is I'll just add the 12, and I'll add the 6, and you can get the idea of what you need to do. So we're going to add values. 
This will be text. Let's make it two millimeters tall. That might be too big. That's okay. And then let's put this at the zero position. We're going to have just two numbers. We're going to start with, um, let's start with zero or I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Let's start with zero and let's start with, uh, 270. We'll increment by 180 and we'll put two instances. Our start value is going to be, let's say 30 and we're going to increment by 30. Let's see if that works. Yeah, I guess we can make that bi-directional since we're talking about text now. And we'll make our line distance 0.025. So our 30 is upside down. So you can see you're going to have to play with this a little bit if you're going to go in a circle. Because we probably want these both to be inside rather than outside. And if we had these uh, two other lines, they would also be sideways. So you're gonna have to play with this a little bit if you want it to work out to where it actually looks like, you know, a watch face or something like that. But that's the idea of the disc ruler. So we can mark that just for fun to see what it looks like. Let's export it. And that looks fine. Let's light it up. We may have to do it over top of something. Nope, here's a clean space. And let's just mark that real quick. So there it is. I think that's showing up. Looks all right. So that's the basic idea behind power ruler. You can do a straight ruler, a disc ruler. You can do, if you have the rotary, you can do any kind of ring marking. And it seems to work pretty well. And I would, my initial reaction after reading the manual was that this looks pretty complex and I don't know if I'm actually gonna use it. But after using it a couple times, it's not too bad. If you're looking for something like this, an easy way to make a scale, I think it's worth a shot. Now the one downside to using the power ruler instead of making this in Illustrator, Inkscape, or Corel is that you can't save this as anything but this. So if you do choose to save this, it's going to be an easy D file. So if you ever, let's say, got another laser or you wanted to do something else with this file, you'd have to remake it on another program. So it might be beneficial if it's simple enough or if you think you're going to use this long term and you don't just want to make a quick scale, it might be beneficial to make this in a program that's going to last a little bit longer. So it might be nice to have it in an SVG or an AI format. So just something to consider. If you have any questions about this, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.